Yeah. Yeah, your questions uh, come from a lot of places. From Williamston, Michigan, a neighbor says, what is the kingdom of God, and is it different from the kingdom of heaven? Yeah, the kingdom of God is within you, and the kingdom of heaven is what's going to be. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost, Romans 14, 17. And, and uh, that's the kingdom, God's kingdom dwelling within us. The kingdom of heaven is when things become like heaven, and <laughs> they're not like heaven right now, and when they come like heaven. So when we enter into the kingdom of heaven, we re 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 that's when Jesus shall come, and we shall enter into his kingdom along with him. But God's kingdom, uh, if you read the 14th chapter of Romans, you ought to read it all, really. Uh, it, it starts right off by saying that there's some people that keep certain days, and, and, and he says that you don't have to. Some people eat certain kind of foods, says you don't have to. I wish a lot of people would read that and hadn't read it yet. And, and then he goes over and says that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not what you eat and what you drink, but the kingdom of God is within you, and it is the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so we're glad to be in the kingdom of God today, and we're all going to get into the kingdom of heaven. Right straight to those pearly gates. Going to make it all the way, and possibly we'll ride a beautiful chariot just, just, just like Elijah did. How I many like to have a part in his chariot? You wouldn't. Ooh, what's wrong with you? It was a chariot of fire, with horses of fire, and burn nobody. And I'd like to be, I'd like to be part of that. Can you say amen? Yeah, I certainly would. And so have both of them, uh, you know, have both of them. Have the kingdom of God in you and look forward to the kingdom of heaven uh, that is, is going to be set up in the whole universe. Jesus Christ said uh, in, the, in the Lord's Prayer, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that's the great vast kingdom that when we shall all be one with God, the Father. Okay, from Williamstown, well, that's the same city. Uh, in Michigan, uh, it says, how can you tell whether a person is possessed or oppressed of the devil? Now, the ushers will always help us with the little ones. We have a beautiful nursery here, and the parents can enjoy being in here much better, so we don't want <coughs> the little ones. Um, and if you meet a person that's possessed of the devil, and you speak against it, uh, the, 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 the demon spirit will will uh, we'll, we'll, we'll start uh, making yourself present and making yourself known. It'll do that every time. Uh, you, you face, like when Jesus faced the demoniac, he began to scream and to yell and jump up and down. and uh, He wouldn't have bothered with that except when Jesus came. He knew someone superior to him was arriving. Uh, when we face a demon-possessed person, uh, they always, they always, that entity within them begins to, either talk to me, uh, one, one, one demon spirit says, I was in Manila when you cast a girl out of the devil, but I just want to tell you that I'm much stronger than that devil. You know, and I said, yeah, you're just a liar. Uh, you don't stay anywhere. Uh, you, you have to come out of this person. We come, we've come to set them free. Uh, and, and so if there is an entity there, a, a spirit there, uh, it manifests itself. If they're only oppressed within them, are, are, are depressed, uh, then you can pray for them, but you cannot bring out a devil that's not there. And you don't have to go looking for devils. It, it's amazing how much teaching uh, we need <clears throat> on this subject today in, in, our, in our world that we live in. I, we've, we've got multitudes of, uh, of material on this subject in our bookstore, and people seldom ever buy it, you know. They wait till they get in trouble. Then, then they oh, yeah, let me see, I need to know something. No, you need to know something before it happens. Or you wouldn't have got it unless you in if you knew something, you see. The devil cannot walk across your threshold without your permission. Are you here? If you don't open yourself to the devil, he cannot come in. Now, you've got to know things like this. If you don't know it, uh, then, then you open yourself up to lust, fant fantasizing lust. You open yourself up to greed. You open yourself up to lying. Lying is a spirit, a lying spirit. And if you get to where you can't tell the truth at all to anybody, you've got a spirit within you of lying. And that needs to be cast out of you. And so, but when you meet a person that is possessed, that thing comes up out of them and they get angry. 
because of your presence. But if it's only an oppression they have upon them, a sadness they have upon them, then, then, then you just command it to go and they get healed. But for your information, it don't really matter whether you just oppress or depress or possess. Jesus is the Lord of all things. He doesn't find any hard cases and easy cases. He just has cases. And you're one of his cases, you see. And not hard nor easy, just, just regular. And he can set anybody free of anything. So you don't have to say, now wait a minute, mine's a big case. And we have people who want to cast out devils and they say, now, man, he's got a big devil and I might have to work for hours on him. I, I was on a radio network a few weeks ago uh, with a man that wrote uh, a, a new book <clears throat> on, on demon possession, a Roman Catholic man. And, and that was in, in Los Angeles, so they had to pick me up back here somewhere. And, and I, I spoke on the telephone, and it was live with that person. And I said, now, now, I just don't agree with the Catholic people at all, because it's not like the Bible says it all. They think that a bishop has to appoint a certain person to go and cast out a devil. Well, a bishop might just appoint somebody he wants to get rid of, you know. You get over there and mess him up and throw him up, you know. They say some of them die when they're trying to cast out a devil. But that's not the Bible. <clears throat> the Bible says that any believer can cast out a devil. Are you here? Well, read the, read the, read the Word of God then. They that have faith shall cast out devils. So they have put the wrong emphasis on it. It's not for someone who thinks he said he's more spiritual than others. It's for the total body. They that believe shall cast out devils. The same people that go and preach the gospel, and there's great joy. And, and, and so we all are qualified if we would accept it and if we, and if we will do it. And uh, it don't take a long time. You don't have to massage the devil, you know, back and forth, roll him around, you know. Uh, the devil likes that, tickles his ribs. But uh, all you have to do is speak from your spirit the power of God and say, come out. And, and the best thing to do after that is to sing. Just start praising God in song and just keep looking at him until that thing says, I've got, got to get out of here, and he's gone. But you don't have to keep repeating it over and over and over and over and over and over again. If you do everything like Jesus did, it'll be right. How many would vote for that? But then study how Jesus did it. Do it that way, and it'll be right. Not what some preacher says, because he may be full of unbelief. It takes him hours and hours and hours, and then they finally don't get free at all. We've known the people that took days uh, work, working on somebody. You didn't need to work on them. You need to work on yourself. Jesus, Jesus told his disciples that you couldn't cast the devil out of that little boy because you hadn't prepared yourself. This kind comes out by prayer and fasting. And so it's not the person you have to prepare. It's yourself you have to prepare. So if you can't cast out a devil, you better go in the prayer closet and say, Hey, God, I better get forgiveness from this junk I've been messing around with and get myself close to you so that you can hear my prayers. You still here? Okay. I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry there's so much ignorance on this subject, but we, there's a lot of material. I mean, I have lots of material on this subject. And it's getting, every day there are more people that need to be set free than the day before. Every day the devil possesses people in this country of ours. You, you, you've got these dirty theaters down the street here, uh, these, these uh, video theaters where you go in there and you see nude people uh, committing adultery and stuff like that. That spirit of lust can come in you and almost burn your insides out and you'll never be normal as long as you can, as long as you live. And you want, what happened to me? What happened to me? Where did this happen? Well, remember where you were at. You know, I don't want to tell you the filth that goes on in those places. You've got no business there. You have no business there. You have no business dialing that 900 number to find out what the astrologer says about you. They don't know anything about you. You give them your... You give them your, your date of birth and they look through the catalog there and say, well, let me see, yeah, yeah, February 15th. That's same as old summer all over there. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's going to happen to you. And they don't know a thing in the world about themselves or you or anybody else. Uh, you pay money to hear lies. And some people will do that. Isn't that amazing? Elkhart, Elkhart, Indiana says, please help me understand why people say they are Christians but are unsure of going to heaven. When I was born again, I received a no-so salvation. You know, we believe what we're taught. And, and you get a preacher that's not for sure 
whether he's going to heaven or not. Well, he's got to tell you the same thing. He's not sure either. But if you can, if you can find a preacher that knows that he knows and he's sure that he's sure, he'll put the same thing in you. And, and so poor information is the blame for it. Somebody hasn't told you the whole truth. And, and as I've told you before, I was in the University of Chicago for some special studies, and I was put in a speech class with about 40 students that were graduating after seven years there, a speech class. And they were all Roman Catholic priests to be, and, 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 and Lutheran priests to be, and Episcopalian priests. There was nobody else in there but those three classes of priesthoods. And, and they were doing their last, uh, learning their last how to throw their voice and talk to people in, in, in public before they had their final graduation. Not one of them was saved, and every one of them was scared. So actually, God sent me there to get a hold of those 40 young men. They smoked pipes, and they smoked cigars, and they cussed, and they talked about what they did last night. And, and, and they didn't know anything about God. And I taught them while I was there. We had many hours together. And, and, I, and, and about once a week, they'd have you to preach, and they'd all say to the teacher, let him preach. So we don't know how to preach anyway. Let, let, let some of all preach. So I, you, it was a class speech that you, that you had to give, and you got graded on it uh, as to the quality of the thing and how you breathe and so forth. And I taught those young men how to get saved. And, and they, they told me, they, they said, you know, we didn't have a single sermon at all, and we want to thank you for giving us some sermons. So we have something to say when we go out there. We... When we graduate, we've got to be an assistant pastor, and we don't know what, what to do. Well, if you ask a young person like that about the kingdom of God, he, he wouldn't know where it was, you know. He wouldn't know. He, he'd have no idea. Although he was a priest in the church, he wouldn't know. And if you ask him if he is saved, he'd say, well, my God, I hope so, and I'm not sure. Well, that's when you have the same feeling. You are listening to someone that hasn't gotten there himself, and he is sincere. He, 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 he says, I don't know. And you can't know. But like the scripture says here, in that moment that you were born again, you belong to the kingdom of God. And now are you the sons of God. And, and so when you believe, that's when you're saved. Preach the gospel to every creature. They that believe are saved. Say are. Are saved. Not will be. They are saved. They that believe not are damned. And so when, when one hears the gospel and they refuse it, they are already damned. They don't have to wait to go to hell. They are damned, you see. You say, well, can they change from that? Yes. Many damn people get saved, you see. And so they say, wait a minute, I don't like this damn thing. I'm going to move over to the salvation thing. And, and so they believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and he wants to save them. The Lord Jesus is not delighted with anybody being lost. He wants us all to be saved. And all the people said? Amen. So if you are not sure of your salvation, you've had the wrong teaching, and you need to come down and go through the experience once again, and say, now, Lord, forgive me of my sins, and then, take, and then take 1 John 1 and 9, that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then we take that verse of Scripture. When we confess our sins, God is a just God, and He will forgive us of our sins, and He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you accept that by faith, you got it. Amen. Say, I got it. Amen. Ah, isn't that great? That great night went out over television, and everybody know you got it. Isn't that wonderful? How many glad you got it? Amen. Amen. Yes, we do know when we're born again. If you don't know, you can know. You can know. Get away from talking, you know, that has no faith in it and has no experience with it, and get with those that really know, and you will come to know too. Rucheville, down close to Indianapolis, uh, Kokomo. Uh, please explain to women... Wait a minute now. There's some people just, just try to get me in trouble. Please explain to women with unbelieving husbands how they can raise their children to be godly. Well, I think so. You may be just the one woman in the house and the husband doesn't serve God at all and you have these children. You don't give up and quit. You determine that those children are all going to go to heaven. You, you have a right. You have a real right. Say right. right. To believe that, to accept that, and to do it in Jesus' name. My, my mother uh, clung to, to her children. Uh, 
my father I, was the last one converted, last, the last person in our family converted. He was the last one, didn't like he'd ever make it. <coughs> she finally prayed him into the kingdom of God, you see. And, and, but she stuck right in there with it, and out of seven kids, she got four preachers. Uh, and and, uh, and, and uh, she just stuck right in there, and I think all of them came to know the Lord and went, went to heaven. But uh, she just stuck with it. But it was a daily job, a daily job. If anything happened in our, in our home where my father wanted to lead some other direction, she put her foot down right at that point. Said, no, we're not going that way. Not in this house, we're not going that way. This is the way we're going to go. And when she said church time, she didn't mean maybe. Everybody went to church. And many times she got him too, the old man. She made him go too. And uh, she'd tease him, said, well, you come over and see who you can criticize today. You'll be very interested. You know, that's what sinners usually do, find things that are not good and not right and so forth. And, and, but, but she was determined. And, and uh, I don't like to see women discouraged. And I don't want to see them blame it on a husband that's not saved either. You know, take the responsibility yourself. I am the mother of this gang, and they're going to go to heaven, and I don't mean maybe. And, and make it happen. Just make it happen. Can you say amen? You don't have to lose your children. And if you have lost your children, look backwards and see where you missed it back there. And if you can repair it, go back and repair it. And, and, and that's, they're heritage from the Lord. We can't afford to lose them. In this nation today, there are several millions of Pentecostal kids that are going to hell right now because that home wasn't strong enough to hold them, you know. In our own community here, I know of some of our own people that have children and they won't come to this church. And I, I can tell the parents why in just that quick, you see. If you're going to criticize me at home, and if you're going to criticize this church at home, then you ask your kids to come here to church. They say, no, I don't want to go there. Well, don't you want to go to my church? Your church, dear God. After all the things you've said about that place, you call it your church. Are you here? Yeah, we've had families that worship here and had position in this church. Had five or six children, not one of them come to church. In our home, as our sons grew up, there was no criticism in my, at my dinner table. I didn't sit there and chew the preacher. I ate beef. And at our table, we did not go there to criticize evangelists. I don't like this one. I don't like that one or the other one. Our sons never heard spiritual criticism in our house. If I had a problem in the church, uh, I never brought it home. My wife had been upset a thousand times. She heard something later. She said, how long have you known it? I said, I caused it. What do you mean? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me about it? Well, it's none of your business. You keep the beds made and you keep the kitchen hot with good food in it and we're going to have a good time in this place that when I leave my office I get to close the door and kick all that junk back in and say you stay there I'll be back tomorrow <laughs> but I don't have to take it home many wives have a nervous breakdown when they're, when they're married to preachers because the preacher doesn't take care of his business he drags it home for his wife to take care of it you're not much of a man to do that I don't think you should be spreading your problems I think you should be solving them and, and, and so around talking against people is not good. Solving their problem is good. and Loving them is good and forgiving them is good. After all, we're all little children. Did you notice that for 2,000 years God said the children of Israel? Well, he meant it. They were still a bunch of bad and nasty kids, you see. And he did it and he still calls them children. And maybe that's what he's got you down for. Maybe he still calls you an infant. You know, he hadn't got out of the diaper stage yet. And, and uh, he's watching us, but he wants us, like Paul said, to get where we can eat meat, where we can stand up and be strong, and where we can make a good testimony, and where we are a testimony to our own house. Are you here? Not only should your children be saved, they should worship where you worship. And if you haven't achieved that, you've got some achieving to do. And all the people said, Mr. Walker, we don't hear from Mr. Walker very often. God bless our neighbors in that lovely city. Uh, Mishawaka. It says, uh, three years ago I was healed, but the disease has returned. Would you please explain? Sure will. You accepted it back. You say, why do people get sick with the same disease that it have? I can give you a few reasons. One is, you get healed by a covenant, and you break your covenant. You see? 
Samson had power even when he was a bad boy. He had power until he hit his covenant and he lost the whole thing. You see, if you make a covenant with God, the best thing for you to do is keep the covenant. Because God, when you break the covenant, God has no responsibility to anything related to your life anymore. And so you do it. And then you maybe go with the wrong people after that. You know, I don't ever go with the wrong people. Ever since I have been saved, I've stayed with the right people. When I got sick, every one of my wicked friends, not one of them ever darkened the door to even say hello to me. They were, they were running so fast and so hard down there in Florida, they didn't have time for one that fell by the wayside. So I discovered I didn't have any friends. I just had acquaintances. And, and, and when I got saved and came to Jesus, I began to make friends after, after that. You run with the wrong bunch, and they will plant unbelief in your heart. They will plant unbelief in your heart. I've never run with the wrong bunch. Ken folks and none Ken folks. I have never run with the wrong bunch. I've stayed with faith people ever since I was saved. I searched out people that had faith. In fact, I looked for people that had more faith than somebody else had. I was trying to achieve faith. I don't delight. In it. I will never listen to anybody downgrade the Bible, downgrade God, downgrade the church, downgrade preachers. I have no time for it, and I want you to know it right now. Some people eat juicy preachers every day. One day it's old Roberts, next day it's Brother Hagin, the next day it's somebody else. Well, I'm just telling you, you're looking for trouble, you're going to get trouble, you're going to wish to God you hadn't have done it. It's better to leave God's people alone. Oh, he's living in sin. It's none of your business at all. Your business is to live right and go to heaven. You see, this man that wrote that nasty thing in the newspaper against us, one of our elders, went and saw him nose to nose and talked to him. It was a black man that wrote it, and it was one of our black elders that went and got a hold of him. And maybe one day we should have him stand up here and tell you what, what happened at that time. All he was saying was, uh, you know, I want to help poor people. He didn't know what he was saying. Just plain ignorant was his problem, you see. And he says, but the Seminole seems to spend too much money for the, you know, he didn't know anything about me at all. He didn't know about the millions of people that are being touched for God. All he knew was that he didn't have it, you know. And so he ought to write dirty things about those that do have it. Wouldn't you hate to be in his shoes when he stands up before God? Or maybe in his shoes when he dies of cancer soon, you see. Then you say, why am I dying of cancer? Well, you're fighting the servants of God when you should have been preaching the gospel. Can you say amen? amen. I leave God's servants alone. I, I, I leave God's servants alone. I don't fight God's servants. And it would be well if all of us just love people, help people, and bless people. And remember, we're on a road to heaven. Let's keep moving.